I'm Monica. And I'm Caitlin. And thanks for joining us here at Security Chat, a podcast where we talk about our childhood fears and some things that are still scaring us today. Monica, have you ever seen the Disney movie, The Hunchback of Notre Dame? You know, I did, but I I have seen it, but not as a little, little kid. Maybe I was probably like in eighth grade, but yes. Okay, so that was, (laughs) this should like not surprise anyone who knows me, but that was my favorite Disney movie forever. And I think it still is like one of my favorite Disney movies. Um, But it was what I watched at my fifth, not fifth grade, my kindergarten birthday. Yeah, we went to like the movie theater to see it. But I remember even like months and months before it came out, I had seen the trailers. And for some reason, my child brain was like, yeah, this is my absolute favorite thing ever. We need to make this my birthday party. I was so excited. I loved it, loved it, loved it so much. And I I vaguely, like, remember the plot. I mean, I must have watched it, like, a billion times from the time I was, like, five to seven or whatever. But I recently watched it again at the gym. And, oh, my God, <laughs> it is, like, the darkest movie I've ever seen. Not the darkest kids movie I've ever seen, like, the darkest, like, film period. But if anybody doesn't know... Really? <laughs> yes, yes. It is crazy, and I think it's definitely one of the darker Disney movies. This is what happened in this movie, and I'm watching it on the elliptical. I'm like, oh my god, this is my favorite movie when I was five. (laughs) I mean, I knew that it was based on some, like, intense source material, but I was like, oh, like, that's what I was watching and, like, really obsessing over. Like, I had the merch Monica, I had Esmeralda. <laughs> I like loved her. I still, she's amazing. So she was, she was gorgeous. She has gorgeous. such a distinct look. It's, it's a good costume for Halloween. Like, yes, I was her for Halloween. It was great. I was her for Halloween one year. And then my friend Kristen had like the other version of the costume. Oh, it was so great. But yeah, what a messed up movie. And it's funny because. You know, we talk about The Lion King a lot, and that is an incredibly disturbing movie. And we talk about Bambi, and we talk about other movies where it's like, oh, the parent died. Yeah, Dumbo, the parent is literally imprisoned. Um, Horrible stuff. But, like, I feel like, I don't know if, like, Hunchback of Notre Dame is just, like, really niche. And not a lot of kids were as obsessed with it as I was. But I'm like, no, like, we really should talk about that because that's, like, a real, like, that was an intense film. So Yeah, I think there's like a subsect of more niche Disney films that are more violent and eerie. Um, Hunchback of Notre Dame definitely fits in there. Um, Atlantis, I think, falls in there. Not a Disney movie, I don't think. But also... No, it is. It is Disney. Disney? Oh my gosh. It is. It didn't... um, People don't know that it's Disney slash. It's not very popular because (laughs) there's no singing. That makes sense. Yeah. Treasure um, Island, but I think, is the one Treasure that... Treasure Island. Is that I Disney? I love that movie. I don't know if that's... What that... Um, that might be DreamWorks, so but... Y- I know Treasure Island because there was, like, a Johnny Resnick from the Goo Goo Dolls song. Yeah, the Goo Goo Dolls song is in it. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> that's a great song, and I think about it all the time because I really like it. Yeah, I, I love that movie, and I love Atlantis. You know, I was Kita for Halloween, oh, yes. like, three years ago. Yes, it was excellent. Um, Good choice. Thank you. But... That movie is also very dark and it's kind of, it's about, you know, like extreme colonization and a lot of people die. Yeah. Like a lot of people die in that movie. Yeah. It's interesting because it's like, it's like not a, I think these movies are not very subtle in like their themes. You know, Pocahontas is also not subtle in its themes. I guess that's more popular, but like, yeah, like Hunchback is like, this is like about kind of us trying to, like, get rid of an entire population of people. Atlantis, I guess, is about the same thing. It's about the same thing and take their resources. Yeah. yeah. Um, But also, it's funny to me that, like, this gothic sort of novel, somebody was like, this should be a cartoon for kids. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Like, I want to know, like, who came into the pitch meeting and was like, look, look, this man was born with a deformity, with a deformity, 
um, where people want to throw tomatoes at him. And he's the nicest guy in the world also, by the way. He's going to go through an insane amount of emotional pain because of how he looks. And then in the end, once we set up this whole friendship slash romantic situation with this beautiful woman, he's not going to get her either. And that's the lesson we're going to teach kids. And also, we're going to burn people in their homes. All right. Well, we've had, (laughs) so we've talked about The Hunchback of Notre Dame, one disturbing Disney movie. And I think our guest Jocelyn has another one she wants to discuss. So let's bring Jocelyn in now. Okay, Scaredy Cats, this is a very exciting episode because we have the lovely Jocelyn Davis with us today. This is a big deal, everybody. Jocelyn is an amazing person. She's lovely. She's friendly. She's fabulous. She's a content creator. You have seen her on the internet. Jocelyn, hello. (laughs) Hi, it's so nice to be here with you guys and to meet you for the first time, Caitlin. I've listened to your guys' show and I'm, I'm excited to dive into this conversation because I, like so many people out there, even in my 30s, have so many illegitimate fears. I don't even know where to start. Well, thank you so, so much for being here and for kind of being on this side of the conversation because I know that you have your own podcast. But yeah, we're thrilled to have you here talking about all of your fears. Oh, thank you. I haven't had the opportunity to like dive into some of these recently. So this is like free therapy. Yes, we're hoping that, you know, (laughs) through chatting, you can work through some stuff, maybe realize why something scared you, maybe let some fears go even if possible. Yes, thank you. More of that in 2021, please. Let it let it be set free. Yes, forget these fears. (laughs) Unless it's like a funny thing. It makes you laugh. (laughs) Of course. Yes, exactly. When you are afraid of, or when you were a kid afraid of animated wolves, was there a specific wolf from a certain movie? You know, besides Disney movies, the other thing that I credit with ruining children's lives, it's old school fairy tales. Okay, there's nothing good about them. If you actually, as an adult, first off, if you go back and watch a movie like 101 Dalmatians, what the actual F, okay? (laughs) This lady is like skinning puppies? Are you serious? Skinning dogs. And not only that, this is a film we're going to show four-year-olds. Like, let's rethink things, okay? So then if you want to take it even a step further, go and look at like original fairy tales. I'm talking like Hansel and Gretel. That shiz is so dark. Um, So like, I don't know if it comes from like Little Red Riding Hood, if like everything just kind of got very jumbled in my my childhood imagination or whatever. But I think that's where the wolf comes from because I don't recall any like prominent wolf characters in any Disney animated films, but definitely in fairy tales, which are terrifying. I don't even think adults should be watching and, and no. or reading those books. When I They're was horrific. In, they are. When I was in college, you know, I studied communications and not that I didn't learn anything, but like the thing that I remembered <laughs> the most are like all these things that are more like fun facts and like actual practical knowledge. But one class I took was called Media and Children. And we just learned like about all these like extremely dark fairy tales Yes. And they're all just warnings, basically. They're like, we don't yeah, have... they're all warnings. We don't have a kidnapping video from the news to show our kids to be like, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> we have like this horrible story about a kid yeah. being pushed into an oven or something. Right. If you talk to a stranger, she will bake you inside of her oven. Like, I don't know if that's a narrative we really want to be selling. And even, you like, know? separate, even separate from the, like, stranger danger ones, because there's plenty of those. But there's also, like, in the original Cinderella, the stepsisters cut off part of their own feet to totally. fit in the glass shoe. You've never and, done like, that? <laughs> You've never done that for a nice pair I really of shoes. need this shoe to fit. <laughs> Come on. We've all done that. But, yeah, and they get their eyes pecked out by birds. So true. Yeah. So true. I don't know why, but they did. So, And I mean, even some of our favorites, movies that I still really stand by, like, I mean, The Lion King, like, really ruined my life. Really did. so dark. Devastating. All the parents die. Bambi, Dumbo. Don't watch those. (laughs) All the animal parents die. Always. Always, always. 
Um, and if, you know, the human characters still go through a lot, but I feel like equally as devastating. The one thing I do have to say that we actually used to discuss on a video version of our podcast um, that, that I hosted with my friend Lily is that the one thing I have to credit cartoon characters with is sparking, like, many people's sexual revolutions, evolutions, like moments where they're like, oh my gosh, that character is so hot because like that was hot Simba, young Simba for me hot was Simba. like, ooh. It's a thing. Jay- I know. Also like Robin Hood? <laughs> yes, Robin Hood very was very sexy. Hot. He was foxy. very sexy. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Thank you. You know what's up. Um, But yeah, young Simba could get it, you know, like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, oh icon God, at yes. the time. So, you know, you take the good with the bad. You can't have, you know, the devastation without the hot factor, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) I thought we were going to mention, like, Aladdin, but we went right for hot Simba. Oh, my gosh, yeah. (laughs) Aladdin's, like, a more obvious choice. Yeah, he's a human being. Pretty pretty straight up that he's hot. We don't have to argue about that. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, Simba, a little weirder. And, like, the fact that I went to the zoo with my niece and nephew this past weekend and thought about hot Simba, strange, questionable, weird. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, he had an energy. I think that's really what it was. It was about the energy. It wasn't yeah, like, wow, right. what a sexy mane. De- definitely totally. like the median, the medium uh, version of Simba, where he was like a teen, a teenager, like young mm-hmm. adult lion, was definitely the hottest if we're, if Which we're is going also, there. You know, also knowing that it was Jonathan Taylor Thomas, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely agree with you. But this is like always one of my favorite conversations. When I did work at Clever for many years, one of the questions I would ask celebrities on red carpets is like, what cartoon character like do you want to hook up with? <laughs> <laughs> and anybody I, ever say Simba? Oh my gosh, of course. Everyone. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like definitely one of the top ranking. Also, Robin Hood always got a lot, got a lot of requests. But then, you know, you'd have really weird, obscure ones, like maybe some anime characters that like I have definitely never heard of. So it really, you know, it runs the gamut. Someone for everybody, you know? Yes. An animation style for every taste. (laughs) I'm so curious now what all like the celebrities would answer. Do you believe in ghosts, Jocelyn? I definitely, definitely believe in spiritual beings. Absolutely. I don't know if they're classified as ghosts. I will not rule it out. I'm one of these people who's like, maybe there's aliens, maybe there's not. I don't know. Like, I'm just not going to focus. It's like not my focus in life. You know, I focus more on like stuff like One Tree Hill, Um, like priority (laughs) stuff. (laughs) Right. Important things. Definitely, definitely believe in a spiritual good and evil sort of world. But whether or not it's like ghosts, like the ghost of my great aunt coming back to like share a secret with me, that I'm not convinced of fully. Um, But I mean, I'm not going to rule anything out. You know what I mean? Who knows? I don't know. What about you guys? Ooh, Monica, you ghosts. Know, your team ghosts. I just finished the haunting of Hill House and the haunting of Bly Manor, and it just it just confirmed everything I already thought. So. <laughs> but it's a show, guys. Come on. No, no I, I was like, I, this is a documentary. <laughs> it's a documentary. I yeah, I don't know if I believe in ghosts. I I would really like to, um, and I really hope to see one one day. I definitely am like interested in believing in them. Like I'm definitely more open to it, but. I haven't seen one yet, and because I haven't seen one, I feel like I can't be... Have you ever seen a ghost, or has anything weird like that ever happened to you? Um, Well, also, like, here's the thing. I say, like, good and evil, right? So, like, I believe in, like, for example, we would say ghosts or demons or angels. I think of all of that being, like, encompassed in this, like, spiritual realm. So I definitely think... Once on a family road trip, we had an angel encounter, a show, okay? And um, it's I could tell you the story if you want to hear it. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so I used to go on these family road trips, like the kind of stuff that you would see in the movies where it was like, oh, this is going to be so fun, but actually you're stuck in the car for like seven days. It's so hot. Everybody's fighting with each other. Your dad's yelling at you, Ugh, whatever. So I was on one of these family road trips. By this time, I was probably... 13 or 14. I'm the oldest in my family. So I was like very much like a pseudo adult at that point. 
very aware of what was going on. So my family was driving home from this epic road trip to a family reunion, and I think in like Oklahoma or something. We were almost home. We were in a place called near Death Valley, which is in California and is very well known as far as in the United States, one of the hottest places in the country and maybe even in the world. It is not a place that you will survive outside very long, especially, you know, during the peak summer months. So we were driving home from a family trip in a suburban, as all the 90s moms had, and in Death Valley, and the car broke down, okay? Oh, God. And this is like, um, and it was a new car, so it was really weird. Like, a lot of stuff didn't make sense. So I'm in Death Valley with my family, and I'm just like, this is not going to go well. We did, however, have a cell phone, a family shared cell phone that we all shared together, but this is like pre-Verizon wireless 5G, whatever the hell we have now. So like we were in Death Valley, the phone was not working. We couldn't call AAA for backup. So we're just like out in the middle of nowhere, five people, broken down suburban. And I remember thinking to myself, like, this is where it could end. This is where it could end. How much water do we have left? How long can we survive out here? And at that moment in time, like, you know, no one had driven past in probably an hour. This guy drives up, brand new GMC truck. And I say GMC for a reason. So he pulls up right in front of us, gorgeous new vehicle. Um, and he gets out of the truck. And I just remember he reminded me of my grandfather a lot, like his energy. He didn't look Aww. anything like my grandpa, but he reminded me of the same vibes. He comes up and he tells my dad, he's like, oh my gosh, can I help you out? Anywho. Magical grandpa helps my dad fix the car. My dad is not a car guy. N- none of us are. And the car starts up and we're like, oh my gosh. So my dad's like, thank you so much. Like, can we get your address? We'd love to send you something. We want to say thank you. The guy's like, no, 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 no big deal, whatever. So sweet. Grandpa vibes. Walks over to his truck. As he's getting in his truck, my parents are like, let's write down his license plate because we'll have our friends who work in LAPD. By the way, this is illegal to do. We'll have him pull his plate and we'll send him like a, some gift, right? So we look at the plates on this truck, okay? This new GMC truck. The plates are God's GMC, all right? So my parents are like, oh, he believes in God. That's so nice. Whatever. We come home back to L.A., My parents call up their friends. They're like, hey, can you run this plate for me? Um, It was this color. It was like this kind of truck, California plates, God's GMC, blah, 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 whole situation. The car does not exist. No. Car does not exist. Oh, my God. Car does not exist. And they did, because everyone had become so obsessed with this story because it was so random. They looked a lot. Okay. Okay was never found, never discovered. I'm fully convinced an angel from heaven came on their GMC truck. By the way, GMC, sponsor this podcast and (laughs) save the day because it's just unexplainable. Now, if there was an explanation, I would accept that too, but I like the angel story. Yeah, it's nice. So so yeah, so that's my my, um, most prominent memory. But I mean, uh, yeah, I'm a big time person that's just like, yeah, I like that story. I'll believe that. Sounds good. But I mean, you know, you always hear these stories of people being like, oh my gosh, in the middle of the night, a ghost moved my furniture or something like that. I haven't had anything like that happen. Also, I don't want any ghosts moving my furniture. I'm just going to say that publicly because I like the way it is. So I put it there for a reason. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Don't mess with the feng shui of my house, ghosts, please. The flow is good right now. I need to keep it the way it is. I always say that I would never want to see, I would love to see a ghost, but never in my own house. Because Mm. I feel like if you see a ghost in your house, then there's always somebody watching you. It's like having a roommate you don't like, don't like, don't want there. Absolutely. I believe that, (laughs) I believe ghosts are like vampires. Another (laughs) fictional creature. Um, Ghosts cannot come in or vampires cannot come into your house unless you allow them to. And that's the way I feel about the spirit world. You know, if you don't want a ghost in your house, don't tell it to come in. So yes. there you go. I do think that ghosts... That's the way I feel. You know, people that are more receptive to it are the ones that have ghost experiences. Like people who want them and are looking for it. That's where the ghosts are like, oh, I can live here. 
Yeah, I'm good. Our place is small. I'm me and my husband's apartment is so small. Like we don't have space for anyone except like maybe the Holy Ghost who's like <laughs> invisible. So like I'm good. We're good. We're all set. We gotta move to a bigger house first. Before you I move into a big and haunted house. <laughs> we need some yeah, we need a few extra bedrooms, you know? I think so that's we're more good. than fair. <laughs> more than fair. You need a whole space, whole extra closet <laughs> yes. for them. So yes. how do you feel about animated things now, especially like animated villains? Ooh, gosh, you know, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I understand that just for something to be entertaining, you need some sort of conflict. Like, you know, you guys know you're in this entertainment world, like for something to be funny or scary or or just baseline entertaining, there needs to be conflict. I do think some animated productions are should just be for grown-ups. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like some stuff is too scary. Like babysitting my niece and nephew, I'm not going to be like, let's watch Lion King. Like it's too hard for me to, it's too devastating. I feel like, you know, just like the older kids can watch that. But I've come to terms with it. I've been healing over the last 20 years. So I'm feeling better about the villains. Um, I'm also able to discern that they're not real. <laughs> so that's been, it's been great. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm curious. Also, oh, go ahead, Caitlin. I'm curious how you would feel about a movie like Nightmare Before Christmas because I have very specific, like, not a phobia of it, but it it freaks me out way more because it's like not quite for adults, but not for kids either. Yes. And that middle ground is awful to me. Like, it just freaks me out so much now. I don't know why. Yeah, it's very confusing, right? You're like, how am I supposed to feel about this? Am I supposed to be scared of this as an adult? Am I the only weirdo? I don't think so at all. Like for me personally, I'll even ask my friends at this point. Like if you were to say like, hey, Jocelyn, um, The Haunting of Hannah Grace or whatever that movie came out. And I would be like, am I, I will ask my friends, am I allowed to watch this? And they'll say, no, you're not. It's too scary. Because I, I like... I don't want a nightmare. I don't want to be scared. If it's like, I just watched a movie um, last night that's like a new Netflix movie that is like a 90s slasher kind of comedy, silly, that's fine. But if it's getting too scary for me, I I know that I'm not allowed to watch it. But I relate to what you're saying, Caitlin, for sure. Are you more, we have a friend, Krista, shout out Krista, if you're listening to this, who she won't watch supernatural movies, but she will watch slasher movies. I always get them mixed up. Or, yeah, she's like, like, I can't deal with ghosts and haunted things. But if it's just a guy hacking everybody to bits, I can watch that. I think it's like maybe people, like for me, I'm kind of the same way. Like if it's like too, like for me, realistic, since I believe in like a spiritual world, like, oh my gosh, no, no, thank you. Um, But if it's like a silly, like, slasher movie like scream or something i'm like yeah bring it on like so ridiculous plus like there's just something so campy and fun and nostalgic about those kind of movies maybe that's the difference but truthfully if i had my pick i would just watch like legally blonde one and two like that's what i would choose i would choose none of the above <laughs> <laughs> so, so funny legally bring me the your, best <laughs> bring me your rom-com bring me something you know bring me gilmore girls that's what i'm here for <laughs> they never had a halloween episode of gilmore girls that was scary so yes no you're so right i love i love that show that's like that's my brand like a show like that is more what i'm into the thing is, now as an adult, I'm more scared of, like, the IRS and, like... The mail. <laughs> legitimate fears. <laughs> like, <laughs> stuff that will actually, like, ruin your life for a moment or two. But, um, but yeah, I feel grateful to have moved past some of these childhood things and really done some healing over the years. So, guys, I think, should we move into Chill or Chilling? Oh, yes, Jocelyn. We have a game we love to play with all of our guests. It's called Chill or Chilling. Great. Basically, would you... I said, like, would you rather? I don't know. I might That might not be right. Well, it's not would you rather because you don't really have a choice between that or something else. It's true. You have to to make a decision. But it's like, chill is like, yeah, I would do that. Chill. Chilling is like, no, I absolutely would not. Great. Okay, I love games. Amazing. Yeah. Excited. Okay, so I'm not sure if you're a Disneyland person, but you grew up in SoCal, so. Yep. The Snow White ride at Disneyland, which they recently changed. (sighs) 
I think I'm chilling. Like, I don't even recall that ride. I don't know if it was like, I don't know if it was like hardcore enough for me. I was more of like a log, like the, not the log ride. That's not Sperry Farm. Um, like I liked the Thunder Mountain Railroad and like the Matterhorn, the scary Space Mountain, those kind of rides. Why is it creepy? Is the, is the Snow White ride creepy? Oh yeah. You basically go to hell. (laughs) Oh, okay. That's Mr. Toad's scary, uh, Mr. Mr. Toad's wild ride. Yeah, I know. That was also liter- scary then. You literally go scary. to hell. Yeah, you do. You do. I, I do recall that one being like a little much, you know? <laughs> it's so much. You get hit by a train and then you go to hell. It's a really weird, it's a weird, really weird vibe. But the Snow White, <laughs> the Snow White ride is uh, is more just you, you are Snow White and you like go through her scary adventures. But oh. they, it was so scary that they changed it and they made it less scary because kids apparently were very freaked out. Not you though, which I think is important. You're very brave. Literally, uh, we're. This is a theme. This is a Disney theme. You're scaring children. Like, come on. Especially OG Disney. Like, have you seen like the original Disney cartoons where they were still figuring out how to draw? Like, yeah. they were still like, yeah. figuring it out. <laughs> Those are so scary. <laughs> yes, I have. I have, and the voices like are very like all so high pitched. It's like the same person doing all the voices. Still, I will say, I mean, my gosh, genius as far as like what it's all evolved into from like an artistic standpoint, but terrifying at times, nonetheless. Terrifying. There was this one of the first ones. It's just this. It's just this lady frolicking through the woods, but she doesn't have any bones. Like. Her body is just like noodles. A pool noodle, like a pool noodle. <laughs> it's yeah. horrific. Actually, yeah. horrific. I hate that. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Here's our next one uh, summoning something with a Ouija board. Jill Lynn, hail to the no. I don't want anybody, I don't want any mystery spirits up in my vibe. No, thank you. I am good. This is a house that no vampires are allowed inside of. No, mm-mm, not interested. People are into that kind of stuff. You do you. I'm over here. I'm not doing that. No, thank you. I live in a small apartment. No space for the Ouija board people. No. I I think it's also because, like, I think a lot of people I know think it's, like, fun. But since I think all that stuff is real, I don't want, like, a mystery spirit I can't pick and choose just to arrive. No, thank you. I agree. I wanna- That's such a good point. You don't get to pick who shows up. No, it's not like Tinder. It's not like you can swipe. They're just here. Like, if it was, like, a swipe situation where I could bring, like, bring me the nice ones, maybe I would be down. But it's not like that. It's not like Bumble, okay? They are choosing the adventure. (laughs) So I'm too scared. No. I'm I'm too scared. No, thank you. I will say online dating doesn't have a great track record for everyone either. So (laughs) So there's also that. (laughs) Maybe we shouldn't make an app for the Ouija board. (laughs) True. Okay, so this is a little bit more fun and less dark, but... Eating your favorite food for one whole month so you can't eat anything else. Let's say it's for money because why else would you do it? I don't know. But that's the only thing you can eat. If it's ice cream, if it's pizza, but you can't have anything else. What are your thoughts? So chill. So chill. I've already been doing this. Like, I mean, I got married (laughs) at 37. So I guess, I don't know if that's old. I don't know. It's not. What is is, is age? (laughs) It's definitely not. But... Uh, you know, in my single years before I was married, I just was like only eating popcorn for dinner for like a solid 15 years, probably. (laughs) And I could do that. The only reason I make like, I mean, I enjoy cooking and I love eating. But when it's just me, I was like, why am I going to make a whole full on situation? So could I do it? I've already done it. I've already done it for zero dollars. But now I'm mad I didn't get paid for it. Gosh, we, I should have had someone pay me for that. Like, and it like would be a, popcorn. Right, like Orville Popcorn yes. could have sponsored you and you could have done a video about it or something. Yes, yes, you guys, absolutely. Yes, chill on the popcorn. I do love popcorn. Uh, this is our last one, but going to a wolf sanctuary. <gasps> oh my gosh, so chill. And you know, I've already looked into this. There's one in Big <gasps> really? Bear. There is one in Big Bear. Um, interestingly, and I'm not embarrassed to admit the reason I know about said wolf sanctuary is because Demi Lovato went there and she seemed to really enjoy it. And, you know, wolves terrify me, as we know, but I feel as though going to a wolf sanctuary would really be like a step towards my healing. And I went to Alaska probably, I don't know, 
not 10 years ago, but like seven years ago, my brother and I went on an Alaskan adventure and we went dog sledding up there oh on the God, glacier. It's so fun. It was so cool. And those dogs are kind of like little wolf kind of dogs. And they're so precious. They're just like the most beautiful creatures. So I would love to go to a wolf sanctuary, but hopefully you guys will come with me. Are you guys game? I would come actually love that. Great. How cute. I would great. Are they puppies? <laughs> are they like wolf puppies? Or are they like adult you know wolves? What? I don't know if they come in like all ages. Um, but I would imagine, especially if they're like, you know, making babies amongst themselves, they would have all sorts of ages. But I haven't been, but I do I do know that there is one in Big Bear, which is a mountain town just a few hours away from Los Angeles. So hopefully it's it's survived and thrived during the pandemic. Because they are actually rescuing, I think, wolves that are, like, in dangerous situations. It's very cool. But we also want to ask about what scares you right now? You mentioned the IRS. Gosh. But what are some things that are scaring you today as an adult, Jocelyn? You know, I try to, like, really make it a habit of not living my life in fear. And I say make it a habit because I don't think it's natural for us as adults to not be, like, kind of scared of things. But try to, like, embrace those things that you're scared of and, like, work through them without sounding too TED Talk-ish. Um, but, like, you know, now that thankfully lockdown has come to an end, I'm feeling, like, a lot more free just, like, being out and about. But, gosh, the things that scare me are, like, I don't know. I mean, like, serious things, like the safety of the people I love, I guess. I don't know. But you can't live in a life of fear. like. That just robs you of your joy. And I take having fun very seriously. So, um, so yeah, I try not to focus on those things and just embrace the, the joy and the positive in life. And this has been like such a great example of, of that. Like what a fun opportunity for three adult women to talk about such like hard hitting topics. I love it. I think it's great. So thank you for providing me with the space. Of course. I love that response. Some people are like, well, you know, this this thing is really bothering me. <laughs> you know? But I do I love know. the approach of like, you know what? Sometimes it's not about that. Yeah, it's like life is so short. It really and truly is. And like, what do you want to do with it? And I know that's, again, like ugh, such a Pinterest quote, TED Talk kind of thing. But honestly, the reason people say that kind of stuff is usually because it's like at least partially true. Oh, so, yeah. you know, it's like a choose your own adventure situation and you just got to like figure out what you want to do with it. And obviously life is complicated. Everyone has different situations and different circumstances, but to the best of your ability, you just got to like make the choice at a certain point to like, what are you going to focus on? Like being scared or just like doing stuff. So, you know, that's what I choose to focus on. I look ridiculous 90% of the time, but. But that's why people that's love life. you. That's very sweet of you to say. I appreciate it. But, you know, I try to look ridiculous on the internet also as an effort <laughs> to, like, make other people feel free and empowered to do the same. Because, again, life is too short. Like, honestly, who cares what people think? I honestly I really needed to hear that anymore. today. So thank I'm you. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad. You know, it's like life is just short. You just have to do the things that you want to, say the things you want to. I mean, unless you're like trying to kill someone, unless you're Richard Davis, so you're not and which, hurting anybody. There's a limit. Rich, yeah, <laughs> I think like I definitely have the natural tendency to like be a worrier and stress out a lot. So I'm trying to like be set free of those things in my old age, and I'm also like Your trying old to. Age. <laughs> I'm trying to reboot myself right now. I'm trying to become like a 2.0 version of myself who's yes. like carefree. So you know, this is where we're at. It's it's going great. <laughs> well, happy to meet Jocelyn like 2.0. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Jocelyn, this and thank was you so for, great. Yeah, thank oh. you for taking the time to chat with us. I of tell course. people this all the time. I'm like, Jocelyn Davis is one of the nicest people I've ever met. She's so positive and full of fun. And that has still proven to be true. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you for having me. And it was so fun hanging out with you guys. And keep up the great work. It's so fun that you're doing this. And I just... 
thanks for inviting me to be a part of this. Of course. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you so much. Where can everybody find you? I know that you're all over the internet being great and awesome. So, but where can they find you? (laughs) Very generous of you. Thank you so much. Honestly, I usually just say Google my name and be prepared to be overwhelmed. And I think that's like what I'm just going to stick with. Um, I'm everywhere. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I mean, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever. Like if you're there, I'm there. Let's hang out. I have a very specific name that no one else has. So if you see me, it's me, Jocelyn Davis. And um, yeah, I, I'm mostly focused on like probably YouTube, TikTok and Instagram, but I'm all over the place. So I would love to see any of you there hanging out. And let me just say that if you Google Jocelyn's name and you watch these videos, you will be entertained for the rest of your life. (laughs) The content is endless. Oh, that's so funny. Thank you very, very much. I can't wait to dive into TikTok later and I'll just scroll through all your videos. I'm obsessed. I'm kind of, you know, I used to have a Musical.ly account, if you guys recall Musical.ly. Yeah, yes, and I, had, I had one. I had a decent sized Musical.ly account and then I got locked out of it. So I've had to start over on TikTok. Uh, so I'm still like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not killing it on TikTok yet. I'm going to be real with you, but I love TikTok and I really want to focus on it more this year. So if anyone has requests, suggestions, recommendations, hit me up. I need, I need help. Ooh, yes. Amazing. I have some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna watch and like I have a kind of an anonymous TikTok account. So if you see somebody Ooh, fun. Yeah, like creeping. Ooh, she's like a Finsta, that. but it's TikTok. What's the TikTok, TikTok version of that? Good for you. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I and just also, creep and I, lurk. I heard you say um fiance. Oh, Congrats yes. on getting engaged. Thank you. Um, whatever that might have been for you. And I'm so happy for you that like this lockdown is coming to an end if you want to like have a wedding and all of that. Thank you. Yeah, we're actually getting married like in a family ceremony in August and then oh, probably doing exciting. Yeah, probably doing something bigger for next you. year. But destination yeah. for you. Destination Love wedding. That. Fingers crossed. Hopefully it all works out. We haven't awesome. planned it. So, <laughs> so oh that's going to be important. But wow. Well, if you need any help, let me know. We got married right before all of this started. Oh, wow. And we, are, we already said we were like, we would have just like gotten married at Taco Bell. Like, yeah. If it came down to it, <laughs> you know, it's such a journey. So, but congrats. That's exciting. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here today on Scaredy Chat. We hope you were a little scared and maybe a little relieved about your fears. And if you're having fun listening to this podcast, please rate and review and subscribe so you never miss it and you're ready with us every week. And hey, make sure you follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at scaredychat underscore podcast. And maybe you have a fear and you're wondering if other people are afraid of it too. Well, we probably are, but you should email us your fears at story at scaredychatpod.com and maybe we'll talk about it on the show. Till next time, scaredy cats. Bye. Scaredy Chat was developed and hosted by Caitlin Riley and Monica Moore Suriagi, produced by Jeff Swimmer, editing and sound design by Fitz Harris, theme music by Eric Fashingbauer, with samples by Jeff Zahn and Jack Lenz, and Gail Gilman is the executive producer. Hold up. 